so on this video um, I'm gonna compare these someone asked me about Adobe Illustrator and the tracing mechanism on there I haven't used Adobe in a while I forgot some of the uh, salt right, yeah there it goes um, basically whenever I draw anything out if it's a simple thing um, I don't know like like a character or something um, you have the ability to go in to um, someone's asked me well why are you always using Inkscape um, the biggest reason I usually will use this is because I'm transferring it right from uh, paint.net here and then I export it again before I put it into uh, the moho so most of the time it's a saving mechanism that I have for when I do it and then generally whenever I am uh, so let's go to playground real quick so playground right uh, make, make sure you have the, the playground pro what I can do here is what I um, started doing as soon as I signed up for it it gives me the ability to create a variant of uh, of a drawing that I've made and I've tried other things but let's go to create real quick and I'm gonna import this here which I put got from originated in, in paint and again from paint on the image I'll usually go uh, here and then what am I doing I forgot. <laughs> okay all right here we go so I go here and I'll basically edit select all and then copy and I'll bring it into Inkscape um, because I, I Whenever this started, I don't know how many years ago, I've been using it as a kind of like a library for everything. And it's very powerful. It doesn't, you know, I can put a lot of high, you know, uh, high pixel image in this. And then when I go back, when I'm usually, it's helpful for me for like a scene because then I can make notes on it if I want to use a pencil, you know, just saying whatever I want to do and I, I use it as a plot course so you know I'll have this here then I'll go to the next one some of this stuff I can draw out but this is what I basically use it for I don't really use it for uh, tracing unless it's a image that is a simple image like I'll show you in a minute here um, it has a complicated way of copying it and if there's somebody that knows more than me when it comes to uh, copying an Inkscape where it's a very close uh, or approximately close as you can get to get this because my ultimate goal is I like the way that vectors look they're smooth they they blend well um, and in some cases it doesn't matter because if, if I'm using this here for like a background sometimes yes on this one I probably got a little bit detailed but I'm not really concerned with it being super perfect right because I'm just using it as a, a backdrop or if I'm trying to convey a feeling in the scene um, a lot of times I'll look at an image and it'll give me like a feeling to where I'm like oh okay this is good for this scene coming up right and and also whatever dialogue because if you're making an animation, a lot of times when you see here, uh, dialogue back and forth from what I've watched a lot is 
when you're having dialogue you want to have the characters in the same frame very close together not like this because it gets confusing right so if you ever seen a movie where they have these big wild frames right and you know the character is in frame but it's small maybe they're walking or trekking across snow or sand right and for just for me whenever I see a movie like that and we don't have a visual of what the person is saying or, or not saying let me take that back they are speaking but you're not you don't see their face so the only time for me a wide shot makes sense for when we're doing you know dialogue is if the person is suffering in some way where we don't have to know what he looks like we can just see based on the surroundings that oh it's scary here or oh it's cold here oh oh it's hot here right because we already have that playing in the back of our mind we understand what that is when we see the scene so when when people are doing like wide shots that's my only um, I, don't, I don't understand because it, in, unless they're conveying something like sadness where maybe you know maybe that's uh, a western where they like to use the thing with hey the cowboy left the house comes back home and uh, his wife and kid are dead wide shot doesn't matter to me because I don't need to see what the emotion is right I know exactly well not personally me I don't know what that feels like but we know what that emotional uh, what that emotional drama will be we don't need to see their face close up or a lot of times where they do that thing where um, there's a fight scene you don't really have to do a lot you could do it in shadows because we know what a fight scene is we know what's going on right we don't need the the director or the uh, uh, the unit guide um, when it comes to you know doing animation like they're they're blocking it out but um, those things you, you anything that you can imagine we don't you don't have to do a lot in depth with unless the only thing I would the films for me is um, show me the emotion show me what the character is going through because then you feel for the character right and a lot of times if it's someone a new character that you don't know and right you don't really have a feeling for yet most of the time the entrapment would be hey let's have a sad scene at the beginning or hey let's have a violent scene at the beginning right because then the emotional draw to that is going to be like, oh my God, this guy just got hurt or stabbed or shot at. And he's in an alleyway and he's crying or he's holding a, a picture of his, his wife and kid in his hand while he's bleeding out in, a, in an alley. Or, um, you know, this guy just lost his job, right? You could kind of put that together. Where it's, oh, uh, you know, he goes out and, and this would just be things where you don't have to do a lot for the character. Imagine the scene opens where the guy is, you know, shopping, right? But he doesn't have enough money. And you could figure out a way to, to, to put that into play. Maybe, you know, he's he's counting and he has a, a sigh or something before he leaves the house. Or maybe if he has a smartphone, right, in the scene, he's looking at, oh, I only have $36 or whatever, right? So that, no emotional draw at all, right? This person just going shopping. Now take to scene he buys a suit it's not a really expensive suit but it's a suit where he's like I'm gonna spend mostly all of my money to where I probably just have enough to eat right so we can pull that in there now cut to he goes to a big building that you don't know anything about and I don't know anything about he walks in he says um, my name is so and so. I have a meeting with da 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 da. Okay, we see the guy. He just bought uh, a suit, and then that's why he's bought the suit. He spent his last money on the, you know, to to. This is what it was for. This is the build up. Now imagine, um, well, sorry about that. You were supposed to be here ten minutes ago, and that position is no longer open, right? Then it's the emotion right there. Every, like that feeling oh dear. and then you're in the mind so like oh my god this guy just spent all of his money he bought the suit and he only left enough money to eat lunch right he gets there 10 minutes late and the position is closed 
are we invested in that? He walks out the building, right? Maybe he leans against the brick wall and then the, the rain starts falling, right? Now, it's somebody, even if you don't know the character, it doesn't matter. But now there's a feeling for some uh, people that are not like psychopaths and stuff like that. You feel for the guy, he just lost his job, right? So a lot of the times when, when we're doing scenes or setups and stuff like that, I think that's the most important thing. If you can get that element, and even if you give that that first uh, uh, that first heartache with the character, now you're gonna follow up, okay, well, what is he gonna do now? What, uh, is he gonna join the gang or is he gonna go to his parents to beg for, it could be anything. But at that point, you're watching it in, in essence to see, hey, does he get out of it? You know, is he gonna snap? Like there's so many different ways you can go, but you there has to be that emotional, for me, this is just me, I have to have an emotional connection to you. I have to have you, I have to see you either in love or lose something or uh, whatever it is, whatever tragic thing you want to imagine. But now I'm invested in the character. So like on wide shots, um, for what I've seen, the people that do it very well is when there's an emotional shot like that, even if you have a wide shot of him going through like uh, the gross, not the grocery store, uh, he's going through the mall, he's looking at different suits and everything like that, right? Wide shot there, we don't really like, okay, he's going through the lanes, he's going through um, uh, picking out ties and da 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 da, right? right? But we're not emotionally connected to that yet because we don't know what's about to happen. So whenever I usually see a film that has a wide shot and there's some kind of dialogue where it's supposed to be emotional, for me, I don't have a lot of feeling for it. Um, but they, look, what movie give it? The, the movies that have done it well, like There Will Be Blood, I remember there was a lot of wide shots there, right? And I can't remember, Did he, I think at the beginning, we introduced the character, like he, he, and the emotion is kind of there, but it's not because you're trying to figure out what, okay, what is this guy a good guy or bad guy? You don't know. So it's for me, if I'm going to do wide shot animation, I want you already invested in the character. So if I have a cold scene where it's cold, it's barren, and the character's walking along and stuff like that, you know, that's fine, right? But most of the time, from what I've seen that works well is the dialogue not be uh, distant whenever we're going through emotions. All right, so on that said here, so this one. Um, so basically what I'll, what I'll, I'm gonna do it in both, but I'll, I'll do it here first. Uh, so, so many, how many colors do you think? That's the first thing you have to go through. So path, right? Trace based image. And that's basically what it, this is. This is, uh, gonna vectorize this image, right? And we'll click here to color and then remove background. Whenever you remove background, basically it just removes all the white. So I don't have a problem with that because I can fill this, the white in later. But that's usually what will happen here. Scans is the same thing as colors. So how many colors do you think this is? You know, I think there's a lot. Um, there's also like different whites, different grays. So let's uh, won't do go crazy because it'll take a while for me to do some of these things, right? So 22 colors I think this is consisted of, but it's going to vectorize all of these colors. So then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it gives me, it's pumping out the image, right?
Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but basically that's what it does, right? It smooths it out. And if I wanted to, technically I could have a very sharp visual uh, image, like a vector image. If I went ahead and, and ended up coloring in this uh, in Inkscape. Right? So that would be brown or dark brown things like that so it would be a very good stunning image when you get close up right and I like the way that looks uh, but I I don't know if there's another way to do it without the overlaps because that's basically what happens all of these are basically stacked on top of each other all right sometimes I see art like this which isn't like I don't know go to the dentist and you see stuff <laughs> looks like that on the wall where stuff is left out but um, basically that's what basically happens right so if I was to go back or you know even if you wanted to do some kind of shadow with this you can do that right so I can take this and lighten it or if it was shadow darken it all right maybe put a blur right whatever I wouldn't do that but whatever you wanted to do as far as the scene itself right you could change that up as many different ways make it co look colder if you have a close-up right if you want it to be like uh, wind blowing things like that um, so that's that for uh, Inkscape right so let's go to our friend here Illustrator uh, that's what I drew it in this paint uh, get that out of here cats all right so same thing here and I'll, I'll just compare them like the person was asking me to I, I've never really did it before but let's see what happens here <clears throat> I can't remember I've been using this in so long what was it and what was it called it was called what was it called there it is image trace sorry about that I haven't used Illustrator in a while and this is the uh, this is not the um, what is it the the cloud version of Illustrator uh, I I did see a lot of debate about that you know which is a lot of people were very upset with Illustrator um, but yeah, I, I didn't go in for that, that just borrowing the, uh, the software to use it. And then the other thing, um, and this might be something where I'm like overthinking things, but they're able to see all the different things that you are doing when you are attached to a cloud in a way as far as like your your artistic take on something or whatever i just like i don't believe in the the security at all when it comes to anytime they say put it in the cloud or you know we're hosting the cloud and then they i think they turn most of these different things into a monthly subscription uh for uh using their products um but uh, I've I've back then when <laughs> wow, how much was I can't remember I think this one here was like six it, it, it was a while ago six hundred or something it it was a, a large price but again you owned it and then um, it was yours you didn't have to and the updates the updates that I did see wasn't a big deal to me but I wasn't going to go into any uh, subscription model at all based on what I was seeing from other people. Um, most people that are doing a lot of uh, art, uh, it's better to have it available to you. To and this is my opinion, uh, available to you uh, on your on your laptop. So I'm not using the uh, that model.
Alright, so we'll just do 16. I think I forgot to do that. I forgot to do the color here. Did color, yeah, yeah, da 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 da. Color 16. Alright, yeah. Alright, so let's just do. Let's do a little bit more. We'll do 20. And we'll see what happens there. And this is just uh, comparing the. Uh, uh, the way that Illustrator copies it's pretty much the same thing from what I'm seeing. Uh, alt. You can see where it's vectorized it, and I'm pretty sure there's other ways to modify, but uh, oh, I forgot alt copies whenever you grab something as well. Let's make it smaller. Sorry, forgot about that feature. And we'll delete. And I think if I remember correctly, Illustrator, yeah, it does erase the other one. So the other one disappears, unlike uh, in Inkscape, uh, where the original, oh god, where the yeah, so it keeps an Inkscape. It it'll keep the original image there. So for the so for I mean, there's probably a way that you could go back here and like I it it's, it's you know what I'll say. It's gonna depend on what kind of art that you want to put out there. I've seen so many different you know ways. I've seen animators get away with a lot if the story is good uh, so if you do ha want to have a backdrop that you know is it's not as sharp right and and there's no really detail that you need to go into and you just want to have it you know like that that's great um, let me go back to the other one Here's, so I'll have other stuff out It's just up to you. Um, but to me, I mean, you all of this is done in paint. And again, whenever you do paint, make sure that you're just grabbing it to put it into something else that's oh, will keep it clean. Because when you if, if I was to take it and I was to save this, like save it as it's a different different uh thing so uh should i i guess we can maybe i'll prove myself wrong and uh this particular paint i have they do have a modifier so where you could um have a very uh uh high pixeled image and you could save it as uh, a pdf um but then Usually when I do the PDF and I try it out, you can open that PDF in the Illustrator. Let's just, I, can, I have time, I guess we can see what it looks like. It probably looked the same. Copy desktop, save, let's see. So, auto detect uh, 1.4 and B, what would 32? I think that's what it would be. Yeah, all right. All right, let's see what the PDF would look like uh, there is save and it is um a uh, extra that you have to get so what was the other one point two all right so hmm, I forgot it did that with the separate layers but it, uh one point three and pretty much probably looks close. Um, yeah. Um, but what I usually do is again, I'll basically copy it and then just paste it right into, uh, let me see, object property. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. So let me go back. Need that. So. Oh, the variants. All right. So, um, so whenever you draw something, and you are trying to get uh, a variant of something. You have the ability to do that. So, which image do I want to take? You know what? Let's take the the other one. Can't remember what was what was the scene that I had. I can't remember which one I added to that one. I can't remember. Okay. I mean, I didn't even save it in the right place. All right, let's go back. All right. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll generate. Make sure that I've got the high quality. And for whatever I do, I don't really use let them choose. I use this the X Excel, and then I use what did they do with the other one? Did they get rid of that already? Oh, I'm flipping out. No, they didn't get rid of it. <laughs> it's because it's on two. Um, whenever you choose this, it locks it in where you can't really modify. You'll have a random number there. So, um, but this is the one I usually use when I'm doing the illustrations. So let's go ahead and over the number of images. One uh, prompt guidance. Prompt guidance is basically if I was to put any dialogue in here about which. Uh, Let's see. Uh, snow scene at night and quality details. Good, good, good. Mm, yep, that's my format. And there we go. So it's basically it's going to take this and then my image that I drew in paint and it's going to generate a new image alright so this is a variant right now It added a house, which I don't want, but but this is what happens. It, it'll basically take your original theme. Uh, the higher we bring this up, we'll generate another one. I'll show you what that looks like here. And you have to have the um, the pro version. But the, uh, if you just do uh, certain images, it's free. So the higher that you have the image strength, uh, right, the closer it will be to this. 
and not just taking your dialogue. So let's see, say we wanted to um, add a, uh, what do we want to add? Elf, let's add an elf with a large hat. Angry at the tree and generate. So hopefully it'll be really close to this here. I like the way they did this better than alright, so the elf is way too small. And I don't know if he's angry at anybody, so let's go ahead and bring this down here. 31. Let's see what 31 does. Generate. I really like the way they did this. Like it was. Well, if you've ever been to Long Island in the uh, in the fall, kind of looks like that. I went to visit my aunt. They have a lot of this like straw kind of trees there. I like the way that looks. Okay. Elf is there we don't know if he's angry I guess he is angry because his fists are balled up but you see my point um, and then let's go ahead and take this all the way out all right let's just use our prompt and nothing else see what they have come up here all right not bad still not angry but again we didn't put a lot of detail into it uh, the more detail you add let's let's see here and whenever you do a comma it's it's basically going to separate that description uh, or worrying or um, uh, whatever dialogue that you're putting in there once you put the comma there it, it isolates that and makes that an actual part of the item so if I wanted to say uh, green hat comma hands raised uh, comma and crime. Crying, facing camera, facing fourth wall. Maybe I'll. I haven't tried this before. Maybe I'll get him to turn around. <laughs> Let's see what he looks like. But you could, I, I really like, I, this, I've tried the other uh, AIs when it comes to this, they, they don't, what, yeah, okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change this theme over here, and we'll go to Playground V2, and high quality, I'm going to click here, prompt guidance, Okay, so basically these elements that are, uh, whenever you choose, Playground V25, you can go here and have what they call filters. All these different filters you can use, right? Let's go back to the X, you know, which a lot of people use. If you're doing animation, it's better to use that. It's, this is the best thing in the world. And let's go ahead and do real cartoon. And we're going to go ahead and click that there. And I'm going to change this not random number. And we're just going to add a weird number. Let's go uh, six, seven, eight. eight. Well, I don't like. It's too close to the 
All right, so let's do that. All right, and it'll give us a different variant, but I'm going to use the uh, E L E R A. Did I use this one? Yeah, let's stick with that. All right, so let's put anime style drawing of a snow scene at night elf with a large hat with a large gray hat and a tree with a black uh, I want to use the gun uh, black uh, what mm -mm -mm jacket Facing camera, facing fourth wall. It's not paying attention to any of these things. And I'm going to take off the expand prompt because sometimes that'll mess up what Playground is kind of doing. So generate. And we'll see what happens there. I'm going to delete these out of my timeline. I don't like uh, that. Most of the time, those themes, um, most of the art that I like is wanted to be dark. All right. So here we go. So remember, anime style drawing of a snow scene at night. Elf with a large gray hat, angry at the tree. That I don't know. Uh, black hat. Da, 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 da. Uh, let's change something here. Full. full body elf large gray hat angry at a tree black jacket and gray boots I don't know why she's doing that with her hands, but they do that a lot. It'll kind of mess up hands. Uh, most people know that by now. They're, but we're, everything else here is super great, right? So we should be grateful. I'm not ever. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that get mad at the at the uh, the new innovations. I've never looked at things like that um, I'm, you know grateful we have cell phones and a lot of different technology so if it's giving any kind of help to you you know oh, learn to draw hands very well a lot of us have <laughs> to do that <laughs> so generate and then either I gotta go back to finishing some other stuff here but I, I wanted to do this is basically going to be labeled Illustrator versus Inkscape. Um, collect, uh, creating vectors. All right, there we go. All right. Um, so, you know, those are all good things. And these I, I'm taking out of my timeline because I don't, <laughs> I do like this kind of style, but I. It's it's not something I would want to be like. Hey, I did this one, so erase it. All right, so that's it for this one. Is this was basically the the person asking me about um, Illustrator. Someone also asked me about um, 
So I'm running a lot of different things on this. Uh, so we got Adobe Illustrator. I got my Moho, was the animated. I have my editor. I have my Inkscape. And I have my paint.net. So I'm almost like, do you run all those programs? And I'm going to show you why I don't usually run them like this. And this is one of the reasons. So this is pushing the limit here. Uh, and I got Firefox. But this is, this is like, it's still running great. You know what I mean? But... You know, I've come close to trying to do a lot of different things at once with those open, but um, someone's asking me about what kind of computer is it? It's an HP computer. Uh, it's kind of modified for uh, what I'm doing here. See if I can pull up. Uh, yeah, there we go. see all right so paint is running inkscape firefox was high as so i think it would be uh this is the editor wondershare editor the illustrator of course uh the recording which i'm doing now it's not a big deal uh but yeah this is a hp i up the the how can i say this the things that I modified here was I did pull out the some of the memory and I, I did update uh, upgrade that but there's a lot of other things that I do where I pull a lot of the Windows regular stuff out of it completely uh, and it gives me the ability to kind of run all of these at once without having to worry about you know uh, it is slowing down a little bit right but it and and but yeah it's 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 great. Uh, I like HP. I've always had an HP, so I'm kind of stuck there in it. Um, but you can tell it's, you know, it's a lot of things going on here, but it's it still will run smooth. And it's still able to pull up, you know, all my, uh, you know, I can open all these other files and I'm still okay. So, but yeah, I'll, I'll put, I'm going to send that in, in the link for the person who's asking me about what kind of computer I'm using for uh, everything. All right. Thank you for watching. You guys have a great day.